I'm about to head out on a nearly 80 mile bike ride on this thing right here. Will I make it? Will I get stranded? There's only one way to find out. That means you're invited to come along with me. It may sound a little weird. I think I might have gotten stung by a bee. Oh. And I wanted to see if you could see if there's like a stinger or anything because it hurts really bad. Oh. Today's video is one I've never done before. I'm about to see if the manufacturer's claim that this is a long distance bike is true. I'm going to explain a few things first, but if you want to jump right to the riding portion, just go to the timestamp on the screen. This is the Anioki AQ177 Pro Max, and it's advertised to have a 100 mile distance on throttle alone and 200 miles on pedal assist. Do I think it could go that far? No, not at all. But when they got those numbers, that was under optimal conditions with a rider weighing 175 pounds. I weigh around 215, I bag, is around eight to 10 pounds with gear. Bike itself is 112 pounds. The battery alone is 33 pounds. So we have to keep that into consideration. I'm not gonna be the optimal size of a test subject. Now this bike also can go a top speed of 31 miles an hour, but I'm not gonna be riding top speed as that will wear down the battery faster. I'm gonna be averaging between probably 12 to 18 miles an hour. And I'm gonna be doing Mostly majority of throttle only. I'm only going to pedal when necessary, like for going up hills. I am starting here at the Walmart in Pittston, Pennsylvania, and my target destination is Berwick, Pennsylvania. And according to Google Maps, it's going to be 37 miles one way. If I do indeed make it there and back, it'll be just under 80 miles in distance on mostly throttle alone on the Anioki bike, which is a pretty respectable distance. When I did my initial review video, Many people commented saying, based on the weight of this bike, it won't even go 50 miles. Well, we're going to see if that's true or not. Now, since it is such a long distance ride, I will be taking breaks throughout because it's going to be uncomfortable doing nearly 80 miles on a bike and on the seat, even though it's a pretty comfortable seat. I'm also going to be giving you updates along the way, and I will be tracking my entire progress on the Relive app. So at the very end, that app will show us the entire duration that we went, mileage, uh, elevation, average speed, It'll have all the information on there. But before we start, I want to know from you guys, do you think this bike is going to take me to Berwick, Pennsylvania and back? Just under 80 miles? Or do you think the battery is going to die and I'm going to be left stranded? Comment down below, share your thoughts, and at the end of the video, we'll see if you're right. All right, we're off. Let the fun begin. Now the good thing about this bike is that it has not only a headlight and brake light, but also turn signals. I am using cruise control, cruising at 18.5 miles an hour, and we went just over a half a mile. And just to show we have covered our first mile, we're at 1.1 and we are at a full battery charge. Cruising right now at 19.8 miles an hour. I'm turning right up here. I'm going, I've gone 2.7 miles.
Just past five miles. We're on River Road down here in Plains. And we're making a right going over 8th Street Bridge, which is going to take us over the Susquehanna River. All right, this is now known as Wyoming Avenue, better known as Route 11, 11 South. This is gonna take us all the way to Berwick. But once we get up to Nanticoke, I am gonna be hopping on the Susquehanna Warrior Trail, which is a rail trail. That'll take us for a good distance to the town of Shikshimi. That way I'm not on the road. and we'll be able to avoid things like that. So we'll be on the road until then. Then we'll take the trail and then back on 11 until we reach our destination of Berwick. Just to mention too, I know you can't see it, but the speedometer on the bike is going between 18, 19 miles an hour, mostly 18. And the speed on GPS is saying 17. So it's only off by one mile per hour or a mile and a half. So it's relatively accurate with the speed of the bike. So if it says we're going 31 top speed, we're going closer to 30. Some bikes or scooters are way off. This is only off by one mile per hour. And otherwise the bike's still holding up well. We're still at a full charge. We're at just past six and a half miles. Just using cruise control right now is making it easier. I only had a pedal a couple times. I'm not gonna have to pedal much at all here on out. It is relatively flat. If we get up to this red light here before it changes, there's a really cool car first in line. You just may think it could take you back to the future. That right there is a DeLorean. Look at that. Passing the old Ridges Golf and Fun Center off to the right here. Used to have a nice two course mini golf complex. Um, what they have? Bumper boats, driving range, and a famous Victory Pig Pizza. Those of you local to the area definitely know what I'm talking about. Gonna utilize the sidewalks for a bit here. Nice and open and wide and no traffic. And we just passed eight miles. So we have 29 miles to go until we reach the town of Berwick. Welcome to Kingston, Pennsylvania. Currently passing underneath Route 309. Still on 11 South. I'm gonna try to go as far as the trail, and then I'm gonna make my first pit stop there, stretch the legs, get some water, and then we'll continue on. We've passed through Kingston. We're now in Edwardsville. Off to the right here is Edwardsville Plaza where the former Kmart used to be. 
and the plaza actually got flooded, I believe, back in 2011, so it's nearly an abandoned plaza. No stores there at all. Kmart was the last one to go. There's a Long John Silver's there. And I think this was uh, maybe a maybe a restaurant, I'm not sure. This is Mark Plaza, which is now completely abandoned from the 2011 flood. And we passed 12 miles. We're now heading towards Plymouth, Pennsylvania. Off to the right up here used to be an old drive-in called the West Side Drive-In. Sign's still there. You can't really see with the foliage. But there's nothing up there now. It's just the overgrown lot. But I forgot, we're going to be heading into Larksville, then Plymouth, then Nanticoke. Made a really quick pit stop. We have gone just over 13 miles. Still a full battery. Pull off here and... Uh, little gas station that's abandoned and vandalized. It is posted private property, but it's clear people have been inside. I'm not gonna go inside since it is posted, but there's still beverages in the cooler. It's still pretty intact. Looks like it's been closed for a good bit of time. Pumps ripped out. And it's right here along Route 11. And I want to share it with you. Thought it was kind of neat. All right, back in the bike we go. I'm gonna continue on until we reach the Susquehanna Warrior Rail Trail. Oh, we're now in Plymouth, Pennsylvania. People like that, they're gonna get cyclists killed. This town's also home to a Kibasi festival once a year. They have vendors lining the streets, all types of good foods. Off to the left here, there's where you would gain access to the Avondale Mine Disaster. It's down that road, I've done some videos there. devastating coal mine disaster if you haven't seen that video and you know, when you want to watch it check it out I'll link that one down below we're now exiting Plymouth Plymouth Township and we're going to be heading into Nanticoke and we have covered just over 16 and a half miles Almost halfway. This is where we're going to pick up the trail. We're entering what is known as Canal Park.
So we're now officially on the Susquehanna Warrior Trail. It's a rail trail. This will take us all the way to Shikshini. It's going to ride parallel to Route 11. This will be safer for this stretch of road here. And once this ends in Shikshini, we'll have to get back on Route 11. And we're at 19.6 miles according to the bike. So we are just a little bit over halfway there. Still full battery. And everything's performing as it should on the bike. I'm going to stop in just a few moments here, get myself some water, stretch my legs, and at least make it to Shikshini for my next pit, pit stop. Passing by the Garden Drive-In. Today is flea market day. Rail trail goes right through here. It's a nice day for this. A lot of vendors here. Also, still an active drive-in too. You can still come here and watch movies from your vehicle. Looks like Blue Beetle and Barbie are playing and also Gran Turismo and Talk To Me. Two screens. Taking a pit stop here along the trail. It feels good to stand up. I'm gonna get a little bit of water too. In case you're wondering about the point of view, I'm using my Telson necklace harness or necklace holder for the action camera. So that's what's been giving you the point of view the entire time. It's been working good. It's lightweight, bendable, comfortable. But right now we are near the noisy road. Let's see, still full battery. 21.1 miles we've covered according to the bike. The Relive app is still working in the background on my phone. That's tracking our entire progress. So I'm not going to stop that until I come to either back to where we started or where the bike dies. Fingers crossed it doesn't die because I don't want to pedal this manually. It's 112 pounds plus with me on it. It's uh, a lot to pedal. But I feel confident so far. I feel comfortable. The bike is performing flawlessly. I've been averaging about 18 miles an hour. I've pedaled maybe four or five times on some inclines going uphill. Otherwise, it's just been throttle or cruise control. So right now, I'm hopeful. We got, let's see, 21, 16 more miles to go to our destination, but that's only halfway. We still have to come all the way back. So I'm going to take a few minutes here, and then we're going to continue on down this trail, and our next stop will be Shikshini, Pennsylvania. This is a nice trail, too. Nice long straightaways. It's pretty shady. You can start it either in Anacoke, slash Plymouth Township or Shikshini or anywhere in between but it pretty much goes for a straight shot from Shikshini to Nanakoke Plymouth Township. Round trip I think it's 20 miles from end to end and back. Coming up here on the left it's going to be something that we've documented several years ago. Old train station here which is now severely falling apart. And on the right-hand side is an old post office and a former amusement park known as Krupp's Glen, both of which I've documented too several years ago. That means we're in Hunlock Creek. And a couple of the rides that came from Krupp's Glen are now at Knobles. I believe the Giant Whipper and the SNS carousel came from this amusement park that's been gone for a long, long time. There's nothing there now to see.
just cleared 24 miles and we're here at the I think it's the former SCI retreat this bridge goes over the, the river and there is a corrections facility back there which I don't think it's still operational I don't think it's abandoned but I don't think it's housing any inmates currently I just wanted to point out that's where we are though And I think I got stung by a bee. I felt, I'm wearing my helmet, and I felt something like crawling on my head. So I grabbed my helmet and like shook it, and I felt like a sharp stinging pain. I think a bee was there and stung me. And there might actually be a stinger in my head. It's still hurting really bad. So I can't really do much about that now, but first time it's ever happened to me. Coming towards the end of the trail here. And we're gonna be entering Shikshini. And we're at 28.2 miles. So this is the outskirts of Shikshini. There's some cars for sale here. And my head hurts really bad. I think I either got stung by a bee or a spider bit my head. It hurts bad. Yeah, I guess the carnival's in town. Looks like the scrambler over there. When's the carnival start? Uh, we're done. Oh, it's done already? Yeah. Oh, okay. Same with our last day. Okay. Oh, it's like the carnival's over. Yesterday was the last day. I'm gonna see if these ladies could possibly help me with this. How you doing? Can I ask you for uh, a question? Sure. It may sound a little weird. I think I might have gotten stung by a bee. Oh. And I wanted to see if you could see if there's like a stinger or anything, because it hurts really bad. Oh. Like right in this area. I have baby wipes too if you need to wipe your hands, but I don't know if you see anything. I just see, it's just swollen. I don't see anything sticking out there's, or nothing. There's no stinger or nothing? No, I don't see nothing. I wonder if there's maybe a spider bite or something. Oh, maybe, could have been. Yeah, yeah it's definitely swollen. Uh, Do you have bad. anything? For it? No, I mean, I'm. I, I live right down the street. If you want me to, I can get you some cortisone or something like that for it. I mean, it's just painful. Hi. Yeah, but you might be able to put something on it to eliminate some of the pain. I think I have bug bite stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to inconvenience I, you. I, I have no problem with that. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. All right, thank you. I'll be all right with him yeah. <laughs> what are the chances? I'm wearing a helmet, thinking I'm, you know, doing the right things, being safe. And like I said, I. I felt something crawling on my head so I went like this you know to kind of get it off and it was either a bee or a spider when I did that I instantly felt a stinging pain and I thought for a second that a bee stung me I, I was feeling I didn't feel any stinger or anything like that but it was throbbing so back there where we saw the carnival and I think I have some audio for some footage when I approached the two women who were at the playground with the kid I said, this is probably gonna sound weird, but I said, I think I got stung on my head. Can you check? Sure enough, it's swollen, it's red. They didn't see a stinger, so it leads me to believe it was a spider. But the woman, with the kindness of her heart, she went back to her house, got a first aid kit. Um, you know, I cleaned it off. She gave me an extra one. It's um, a sting and bite pad, in case it happens again. So that made the pain go away for the most part. It's still there, but very dull. But I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it and make sure it doesn't turn into something else. I've, you know, I've, I've come across hundreds if not thousands of spiders on my adventures. I'd never been bitten. And the chances of this just riding my bike and that happens. 
So if it doesn't go away or the swelling doesn't go down or it gets worse, I will indeed be going to the hospital. But I hope that's not the case. I hope it's just a temporary thing. But we're at the end of the trail here. So we have to get back onto Route 11. We have 11 miles to go to our destination. And from there, we're gonna turn around and repeat the whole process back. Obviously on the way back, I'm not gonna be showing you too much. It'll just be a brief highlight here or there. I more so wanted to document the progress to my destination, showing you that I at least, you know, made it there. This is what I encountered. This is what it took. This is what happened. Try to save off a little bit of time. I did kick up to pedal assist four, and we're now cruising at 24 and a half miles an hour, just under 25. Looks like we got nine miles to go. Actually found another section of trail and we're going through a type of scrapyard here. It's tractors, snow blowers, bicycles. Campers, vehicles, huh. Just to give you a quick update as to what I just stumbled upon, look through the weeds. There are abandoned railroad tracks which I had no idea were even here. Obviously this is an old rail trail, but there's still tracks in place. I think in the future I will be returning to document this section to walk the line, see where it goes. But they are going parallel to the trail we're on. Route 11 south is over there. Got the tracks and the trails, so everything's kind of riding parallel with each other. But that is a nice little bonus find that I didn't even know was here, nor did I know the section of trail was here. So things are looking promising for the future, closer to winter time. I will indeed be back to document that section of line. And since we got some shade here, just to show you, still fully charged. The mileage did reset because the bike shut off when I was in Shikshini getting my spider bite tended to. And 7.2 miles to go until Berwick. Now I'm not certain if these tracks are abandoned or not. There's actually a crossing up here. They did split off. There's a switch right back there. I mean, they're overgrown, but they're not terrible condition. Now, these are where the the Susquehanna River lands. I don't know if the river trail, I say ra rail trail <laughs> continues. I'm going back on the road. I don't think the trail continues that I know of. And here's the train bridge. So that rail line does cross over Route 11. I'll definitely look more into that in the future. to make a really quick pit stop to show you that if you're on the hunt for Bigfoot well the search is over I found him the elusive Sasquatch Bigfoot monster has been found as well as his relatives neat little place here it's a uh, concrete artwork everything from Bigfoots to mermaids Horses, miners, alligator, eagle. But yes, Bigfoot has been found. We're now on the outskirts of Berwick. We passed the nuclear facility and we have five miles to go. But technically, this is considered Berwick. I'm going to the 
downtown area. Just like that, we've reached our destination, Berwick, Pennsylvania, right here in the downtown area. This is the intersection of Market Street and 11 North, which we'll be taking back. So obviously the bike did not keep the exact progress because we do did have to restart it. I do want to check the Relive app and see what it says so far. So Relive, we've been going for two hours, 50 minutes, and have gone 37.3 miles. I'm actually gonna take a screenshot of that. So that is our progress so far. And we basically need to repeat that all the way back. I'm gonna hang out here for a little bit, maybe get a little bit of food, for some lunch for myself, and uh, still a little bit painful there. I'm hoping it's, gonna go away but it's still it's still tender with that being said I'm not gonna show a whole lot of my progress on the way back because it's gonna be repeating what we saw so what I'm gonna do is along the way I'll be stopping to get some pictures of some things I saw along the way some cool roadside things and I will ro roll a little photo montage after this clip and then I'll bring you back either when we arrive back at Pitts to Walmart or when the battery dies. But right now, the battery is still fully charged. I'm really confident that we're gonna make it back. Unless that meter is not accurate, that's a whole nother story. But one way or the other, I'll bring you back and we'll share our final thoughts as to how the Anioki AQ177 Pro Max did perform today.
Just wanted to bring you back for a quick update. I'm currently back on the Susquehanna Warrior Trail on the first section. So we're heading towards that direction is Hunlock Creek and Nanakoke. Route 11 is still over here to our left. But we have an update. Those that said that this bike would not go 50 miles in a full charge. We just hit 50 miles and we're still at a full charge on this bike. So once we do arrive back at Walmart, which I'm now I'm about 99% confident we're going to make it to Walmart. We'll see how much batteries left. The only thing I don't like is it doesn't show the percentage. So I know it's not still at 100%, but none of the bars have gone down. But I would like it to show a percentage. That way we can have a more accurate reading as to the battery level. But as of right now, it hasn't moved at all. We made it to Berwick. We're on our way back, and it's still a nearly full battery. So looks like we're not going to have any issues. But once we're at Walmart and Pittston, another 27 miles away, we'll see where things end up as far as the battery level and performance of the bike. Holy crap, we made it. We are back where we started on uh, one full battery charge. Man, am I sore and stiff. So, in just a moment, I'm gonna run the Relive app that documented our, our trip today. According to that, we did just over 73 miles and we're riding time was about almost five and a half hours. So I spent over five hours on this thing. A couple things I want to mention. Before we go any further though, I hope you enjoy that photo montage because those are mostly photos I captured on the way back. Things I saw both on the way there and spot on the way back. And number one, you may see some of those locations in the future. I think I did find some suitable locations for filming in the coming months. Some I didn't take pictures of, some I did. Some you may see again. Secondly, if you do enjoy photography and things related to it, I invite you to check out my second channel, JP Photography, where it's encompassing all things related to photography, camera gear, photo walks, editing, stuff like that. So if you want to check out my second channel, Geared Towards Photos, there will be a link down below. As of right now, it's still showing a full battery. Now, honestly, I don't think it's 100% accurate. We put in, you know, close to 80 miles. The battery has gone down. Now, I have ridden this prior to today probably six or seven times on just one charge. And after the fourth or fifth time, the battery did go down slightly. But this thing holds a ri ridiculously long charge. The AQ177 Pro Max by Anioki is super impressive. Like I said, we did nearly 80 miles and it didn't even put a dent into it. Power was consistent throughout. I will say though, towards the end, probably in the last five miles or so, maybe 10 at the most, the top speed did diminish by about two or three miles per hour. I was going faster on the way back. So on the way there, I averaged about 18 miles an hour. On the way back, I was averaging between 25 to 30 just because I was wanting to get back. I was getting sore and tired. 
I pedaled maybe 10% of the entire trip. I could probably count on one hand the amount of times I pedaled, and that was only for steep hills or getting a start up a hill. Otherwise, it was pure throttle, mostly cruise control. And a rider my size, carrying an extra 10 pounds, it handled it like no issues. I mean, I, I was floored that it did as well as it did. Even the seat. Now, yeah, I am sore and tired. Anyone would be. But the seat is actually really comfortable. I didn't have to take as many breaks as I thought I would have to. And I wasn't asked to do this video. The company hasn't paid me for my review. They haven't asked me to do a long distance video. I wanted to do this on my own accord just to see what it's capable of and to show those who watched my initial video or that maybe are thinking about this bike, what it can do. As I said in my first video, this is definitely an alternate mode of transportation. It won't replace your car, but it can help save on expenses with your car, such as gas, oil changes, putting mileage on it. If you want to run to the friend's house, to Walmart, to a rail trail, to do whatever you want. You have enough battery power to do so, and this thing won't need to be charged nearly as often as other e-bikes. I could probably go another 50, 60 miles I'm comfortable doing. If I was pedaling the entire time, I could go even further. I don't know what else to say besides this bike is impressive. This thing, I feel ultra confident going on another long distance ride. If I had more time, I may have went another 10 or 20 miles, but I do have things to do later today. Five hours on the bike, and then probably an hour off, because I did make you know those pit stops. I did go to a convenience store, actually a Dollar General in Berwick. Got some pain medicine. I got uh, some more alcohol wipes and allergy medicine. So my bite here, the pain was at, you know, about 100 before, or a 10. It's down to about a one. It's barely there, so I feel okay that it's it was only temporary. Anyways, guys, if you made it this long, I want to thank you for doing so. Hopefully this answers your questions. Is this a long distance range bike? Absolutely. If you get this bike, you could go for a long ways and you won't have to charge it nearly as much. And it's a comfortable ride. So if you do have any further questions, feel free to ask down below. But to the naysayers who said this won't do 50 miles, I think we could show that it clearly can, and then some. I, I think it can do close to 100 miles on throttle and closer to 150 probably on pedaling. That's just my own personal thoughts and opinion. If you disagree, so be it. But I have evidence and proof to back it up. Anyways, guys, to see more e-bike related videos, check the link down below. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching, coming along, and listening to my spiels on today's adventure. Until next time. I'll see you in the next video.